the key idea is is the following. I mean, like the state, as it is understood in the Marxist tradition and by Marx, if we mean by that the sort of course of apparatus for maintaining force of class domination, that should absolutely wither away and be abolished. You know, uh, so so that's Agreed. not what I'm saying. It's not like <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, just as private property and so on. You know, but. The key is this, and it's directly related to my sort of imminent critique of Hegel in the, that is in the book and is also going to be continued in, in further work, because one of the really great things, even though Hegel's actual account in terms of like the sorts of institutions he thinks are sufficient for freedom are wrong because they're predicated on private property and he even has a specious arguments for like the estates in terms of classes and so on. But the really brilliant thing about the philosophy of right is that Hegel says, like, what we have learned, and this, I think, is absolutely true, historically, is that, like, for living beings such as ourselves, what I've been calling rational organisms in this situation, to lead a satisfying life, we need to be able to live our lives, engage in our activities, and be recognized in three inseparable but distinct spheres. This is what Hegel calls the family, civil society, and the state. And we can be extremely critical of what Hegel has to say about the family, what he has to say about civil society and what has to be state, and still recognize that like these are not arbitrary divisions, because the family in this thin minimal sense would just be you need each individual in their building and socialization and coming of age needs a sphere in which like they're recognized just as the as the particular individual they are, you know. The people who care about me because I'm Martin, you know, it doesn't have to be private property, marriage, patriarchy, all sorts of other garbage. We can abolish all of that. But that's not abolishing like the family as a form of intelligibility for rational life. That means mm-hmm. that like we distinctly to understand yourself as a full individual. You, I need on the, both to be recognized and socialized in such a context that can be very ca- capacious and plastic. But that's the sort of like here I matter as this particular individual I love and am loved in that sense, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Second category, civil society. Why is that a cat- sort of like an ontological condition for growing into our form as rational organism? Because I also need to be recognized and recognize that this family, however delimited, and our intimate relations are not the whole world, and we don't sustain ourselves. We depend on this whole, ultimately global, form of production and part of leading a meaningful life is being able to like enter into various activities for the common good what we now call professions we could call something else through which i learn you know the way i depend on others the way they depend on me and i can affirm these things you know so like that's like in the classroom i don't want my students to relate to me as martin the way they do in the family this is another sort of relation you know another relation of recognition which can be irrational irrational but where we can see like it makes sense the way we relate to one another in that, and also then participate in other, not like now, like, oh, I'm just a professor and I order my shit on Amazon and I don't have to care about that. Alienation, not because I'm alien from some essence, because because I can't take responsibility for what sustains me. I have to close my eyes Mm -hmm. against what sustains my life. And that's a form of spiritual pain. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just like, hell yeah. So, so, so it's just like, yeah, yes. but, but we can see <laughs> this sort of emancipated form of civil society, you know, and then the state, but we could call it like republics, I'll explain this in detail uh, in the LARB response. That's not like, oh yeah, we need a coercive apparatus to keep all these people in check. It means that like the third thing, what also enables me my life are the collective forms of self-legislation yeah. that structure our global form of life, you know? which we have no access to now because we're dominated by these laws of capital that we can't change and that produces all these effects, you know? And even if I engage as a politician, I'm going to be dominated by those and I'm going to have to betray my ideals and I'm going to be alienated in the very precise sense, not from some human essence, from (laughs) my ability to take responsibility for and justify my reasons, you know? Yeah. But in an emancipated form of life, distinct from both my family life and my civil society life, Everyone should have forms of participation in the ongoing activity of legislating the very form of our life. Not professional politicians, blah, 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 but rotation, etc. you know. And that's sort of in thin, minimal way, not a blueprint, but that's like a deduction. This is the most beautiful deduction in Hegel. This is the real deduction he does that one can lose sight of because people get so pissed off about his pro- blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but the real pure form is a fucking move of genius. Like, it's just completely true, I think, you know. 
And then, so one could graph that on to the three principles of democratic socialism that I do in the book. One could say like, well, here are the various ways that they would govern those different spheres, which are not separate spheres. They're distinct. They're not the same thing, but you can't separate them. And to live, to actually live a good life as a rational organism, which is much, much harder than living as other organisms because we don't know what's good for us and we fuck up all the time, etc. Uh, you know, very conceptual of what's good. You know, minimally, even though we can't legislate in advance, we, we, can, we can actually, part of what we learned historically and what Hegel wants to show us that we've learned historically is that we need to have a form of life where we can rationally both distinguish between the sphere and see how they're interconnected. Mm -hmm. And rational here doesn't mean like instrumental dominating rationality. It means like I can like give good reasons for why my filial commitments are what they are. I can give good reasons for the professional work activities I'm engaged in. I can give good reasons for the legislative processes I'm engaged in, state, civil society, family. And that, sustaining that life, which will always be fragile and can always come with heartbreak and difficulty, achieving and sustaining that life, that's the highest good. That's the meaning of history. Yeah. I'm so sympathetic to this because, and I, I understand why it would be provocative for you to to hold on to Hegel's term of the state here, but I take yeah. it that you're, because of course of the withering away and all of that, but I think that it is a really good point that in some minimal way, because you're right too, like, you know, people and Marxists as much as anyone else can get really hung up on like, oh, you know, I don't actually like that Hegel advocated for constitutional hereditary monarchy. And it's like, well, that's not really the point. In fact, the point yeah. as you see it, in which I agree with is that like, yeah. there is no getting rid of some form of collective self-legislation, right? Like that's not mm. arbitrary. That's not something you get to get rid of. And I think that this is like a really, I don't know, I find this to be a really helpful like way of articulating why certain sort of anarcho or libertarian kinds of articulations of this I find unsatisfying because it's not as yeah. I can't imagine actually, you know, however emancipated society is otherwise, you know, you know, great. We abolish the law of value. I can't imagine that we just then don't like have norms or like as groups of people living together or like no valorization. <laughs> yeah. Like, we would just would, would don't need to value anything. Right? No. Like what are you talking about? <laughs> right? Like there is going commitments out right, of here. Do need to be still normative commitments made about like what it looks like for us to live together and what what sorts of you know rules bind us and instead I, I, I just can't I just can't understand I, I think that maybe one way to put it is right there's a confusion here between the state as instruments of class domination which is the form in which yeah. we know it right that's the, yeah, that's of course, the of state course. we and know that should be abolished and that should be abolished yeah. and like the state as just this minimal recognition of the necessity of collective self legislation I like this quite a we're bit also, we're also fans on this podcast of not getting like doing neologisms unnecessarily and just like getting rid of the old fat of oh, the old word <laughs> repurpose it we can yeah. you know, we can we yeah. can figure it out negation yeah, yeah to take what, exactly what should yeah. be dead and you uh, develop <laughs> what should be kept alive and developed you know? yeah. that's the point yeah. you know it's a determinant negation of all of these yeah. categories so just to push even a little more uh, that was great what you said Gil. i just want to push like it's not just the way i would want to put it, it it's if we just say and i don't think this is what you meant but just to drive home the point one just says, oh, I can't imagine that even emancipated, we wouldn't have gotten rid of this as though that's even the asymptotic horizon. Right. Whereas like the conception of freedom here is that like freedom yes, yeah. is not being free from right. norms or laws. Right. It's being able to act in light of laws and norms that you can affirm right. as expressions of your freedom. So it's like really, really central that like there would be no form of rational life at all without that, you know, just that we wouldn't be any forms of non-rational life with that their sort of species constraints. But so like, so that like participation in something like explicit collective self-legislation wouldn't just be a means to our freedom, it would itself be an exercise of our freedom, you know? And mm -hmm. we talked a little about this before we began, but like my debate with William Clare Roberts in the LARB became very illuminating for this because he was really pushing back on this collective self-legislation point and just thinks of that as something that is done top down to us. And I'm trying to show there that like, no, no, we're always already collectively self-legislating just in terms of like, w whenever I buy or sell labor or commodities, you know, I'm reaffirming that collective self-legislation that renders us intelligible as producers and consumers, as capitalists and wage laborers, etc. You know, that's always going on. So the question is not if 
we should have collective self-realization. <laughs> it's completely non-optional. <laughs> and if one denies that, then you just have atomic individuals, you know? Yeah. Uh, but if you're going to take seriously that we're social individuals. Capitalism is a form of collective self-legislation. It's just a really exactly, shitty exactly. one. <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's just yeah, a very it's unfree, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a very unfree exactly. form of self-legislation. And if it wasn't, yeah. And if it wasn't, as I point out, then we couldn't run an intelligence. It's something that we're doing to ourselves. Yeah. You know, it's not mm. something, and that's absolutely crucial for how we can change it and emancipate ourselves. Because if capitalism is this external force that inexplicably is forced upon us, it's also unintelligible that we can overturn and change it. So it is something that we're doing to ourselves and that we're all in practice affirming mm -hmm. that this is what value is, that yeah. this is how our so social relations ought to be. I do that every time I buy something or do something in this form of life. And it's very important to see that it only lives in and through us.